Hello, Muffins and Housewives, Sister Unity, with Sister Harlot Davidson. She's Harlot Davidson because you can ride her. We have just come from downtown Los Angeles and the world headquarters of FIDIM, the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. Mm -hmm. Yes, a prominent fashion school here, fashion and design school here in the City of the Angels. Um, and uh, we've, we, they have a, a, what do they call the store? Scholarship, scholarship store. Well, yeah. Where they have uh, fashion designers and, and companies donate garments to be sold, and then the money goes towards scholarships for students. And uh, we'll show them what you got, and I'll get mine. Goodies! I got these. Lovely earrings. Ooh. They go well on my ball. Jail saves, tramps and thieves. And then I got this one too. Somewhere there's a cardinal weeping bitterly, naked in the cold. They could make good eyebrows. I got footwear. I got these. Right? Fabulous. Five dollars. They were on sale. They're suede. I don't know if you can tell they're suede. Or faux suede. It's like Donald Trump. Fake suede! Um, Five dollars. They were on sale. And I also got a white veil. Thank you, Sister Karen Saul. Sister Karen Soul bought a white veil for her. For those of you who don't know, with the sisters, when you join and become a sister, you sort of go through periods of training. Uh, first, you're a postulant, then you're a novice. And when you're a novice, you wear a white veil to show that you do cocaine or that your head should be used as a toilet paper. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so we were there to speak to students about confidence. And uh, a couple of the things that came up uh, I thought were really worth sharing. So we thought we would recreate some of what was said uh, for you, for anyone who, who wants tips on building confidence, feeling confidence, and approaching the world with confidence. <clears throat> Run! The world's a freaky place! Run! Ah! And there's our uh, confidence. Okay, thank you very much. How do you turn this off? Um, no, the, um, for me, I was. Uh, uh, it came to my mind. For me, uh, there were two things mostly that have helped me with anxiety and nervousness and shyness. Which, when Sister Unity is not around, what's left does tend to feel those things. Uh, I do believe has a, a touch of social anxiety. Um, and there's two things that were taught to me that really help. One is taking care of myself and gardening my own sense of self. And then the other one is, it's about the work. So the first one about the gardening, um, there's various ways of approaching it. For me, doing art, having a job, meditation, being with friends, garden my sense of myself. I feel grounded when I work every day, Nine to five. I know where I'm going. I know I'm earning money. I know I'm going to be okay. I like what I do for work. So I'm like, okay, I'm on the earth. I'm walking the earth. I'm doing breathing, working. Everything's okay. It's a very grounding thing. But beyond that, there are some times when either how you were raised, it wasn't filled with a lot of support, um, or that there are people around you, uh, people who are against you, people who are friends who aren't really friends. People can tear you down or neglect you. And if this is something in your life, what you can do is you've got to counter it. You've got to counterbalance it with your own thoughts and words. Words are matraka shakti, the, the, the power, the energy in the universe of sound and word. And so you've got to create matraka shakti. You've got to create words, like, like words are spells. Uh, you've got to cast good spells on yourself. You can 
do the aphorisms. I like myself. I love myself. I think I'm good looking. I like how I look. Just look into a mirror and say these corny ass things to yourself. As corny as they are and as embarrassing as it was, when I tried it some years ago, uh, I just I, I gritted my teeth and I did it because it was so corny. But after about a month, I was brushing my teeth one day. I put the toothbrush down. I looked in the mirror and I was like, God, I'm, I'm kind of cute. And then I was like, who the hell said that? Like something in my mind had shifted just by repetition, by rote repetition, the spell got cast. Something shifted in my mentality because of the, the powerful and usefulness of words. So you can try that. Um, pamper yourself. Take yourself out. What was it you said? Take yourself out on a date? I said take yourself out on a date. You know, sometimes you, for me, I always want to help people all the time. And I sometimes have a hard time of doing things for myself. But when I have taken myself out on, you know, a nice dinner at El Pollo Loco <laughs> uh, or anywhere, you know, anywhere you want to go that you want to treat yourself to, um, I think it helps me, it, ha it has helped me feel a lot better about myself because I know I'm doing things for myself instead of, you know, wanting somebody to do something for me or take me out on a date. It's like, no, I work or, you know, I can make my money. And I can take myself out on something nice or, you know, sometimes I do a lot of things by myself because it gives me time to reflect on my life. Um, and it also makes me feel comfortable also with being by myself. Um, I'm always surrounded by people, but, you know, sometimes it is who you hang out with, you know. Like we were talking about, like, surrounding yourself with people that are going to uplift you rather than judge you for, you know putting on that wig that they didn't think was fitting for whatever drag you were doing. What you look like, who you are, how you express yourself. Yeah. People can get on you. I mean, they may be right, they may be perfectly accurate, but, like, why was it, ne why was it necessary yeah. to say that? Like, it doesn't do any good. So you've got to counteract that is what we're saying. Yeah, just bring positivity to yourself. You know, you may have some friends that, you know, are always kind of, like, a little down or, you know, they can't see the bright side of things, but you have to find the bright side of things for yourself rather than expect them to do it for you. Or go and make or buy or find the bright things. Nature is great for this. Get out and spend time in nature, mm -hmm. somewhere that is that you like, that's beautiful, that's quiet, that's uh, it has a restorative effect. It chills you out and lifts your heart up. Art is for this. Uh, some art is about politics or the gritty dark side of life, but a lot of art is about beauty because beauty refreshes, opens, and uplifts the heart. So you can you can expose yourself to these things. And like Harlot was saying, there's a, an old Hindu teaching, the company you keep determines your destiny. So choose who you hang out with. Observe the effects that people have, where they take you, what you do, the way they talk with you. Uh, and choose to be with people that um, bring good, that bring upliftment, that are supportive, that have your best interests in mind, that have uh, a gentle way of being with you, um, a friendly way, a welcoming way of being with you. And it's okay to also be challenged by people to welcome that challenge because you can learn from those challenges. Like, you're not always going to agree with somebody, I feel, but um, at least you got your point across and you can hear theirs and... You can go from there with that, you know. Which is different than people who challenge you in a bullying way, people mm -hmm. who challenge you in a tearing down way, mm -hmm. people who challenge you as if to say, oh, oh, no, I know, yeah. so you listen to me and I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I mean, everyone does a little bit of that. It's called advice. But someone who does that as a constant pattern, that's not really a friend. That's someone who's looking to turn you into an acolyte. Mm -hmm. So the other confidence, confidence builder for me has uh, this phrase, it's about the work. Uh, I, I found this, first of all, in performing. I could be anxious and nervous and feeling like, ah, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's so scary. But when I focus on the work ahead of me, it doesn't erase the fear. It's not like I'm trying to get rid of the fear. It just goes like, yeah, yeah, okay, there's fear. But you know what? This is the thing we're doing over here. I'm going to pay attention to this. And it carries me through because I'm focused on that. I don't, I'm not overruled by the fear and anxiety. So focus on the task that's ahead of you. 
uh, either like in performance, it's like, okay, I have lines to do. My character's in a particular situation. I got to play that out. I got to act and, and do, you know, walk over there and say this and slap her and whatever. Or even if it's like you want confidence in going out for the night to a club or a bar, assign yourself a task. My task is to dance at least three times, to order a drink, uh, to talk to three people. And you had great advice about how to approach people. Oh, so, you know, we were talking about how, you know, you can bring, how we bring our sister into our other self. So with my sister, Sister Harlot, she can speak to anybody. She can go up to anybody and start a conversation and be okay with it. As my other persona, I have sometimes a hard time, though I know a lot of people, I still get a little social anxiety a little bit. Um... But yeah, a simple just, hey, my name is such and such. What's your name? And sometimes that may continue or it may stop it, but at least you can break the ice. Because sometimes, you know, you have an itch. You want to say hi to somebody, a guy or a beautiful girl, um, but you have a hard time. I think the simplest thing is just to say, hi, my name is such and such, or oh, hi, how are you doing, or whatever makes it easier for you to start a conversation and you never know where that it's going to end up two minutes five seconds three hours 20 years you know that's absolutely right um uh, i used to tell people uh, you know there's three steps um to starting a conversation in, in a public venue hi and if they say hi back you know that the door's open then introduce yourself by name i'm sister fart my aunt uh and then if they give their name back that door is open, then ask them a question. Mm -hmm. Like, a, you know, what do you do for work? Where are you from? Are you from LA? Are you from New York? Are you from my anus? Um, some, like, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite ice? Whatever. And did you see the Avengers? Do you see the Avengers underwear? Uh, I've, I've seen Captain America's bunghole. Whatever it is, ask them a question. Uh, and then you'll know because they will either give you a short clipped answer and you can hear the tone. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, they're not into this. Shoot. And they just go away. Or they'll start to talk, and they may ask you a question, and it's like you've rubbed the sticks together, now you've got a fire. Uh, or if they don't answer it all at all and just look at you and turn back to their drink, you know they're a complete fucking asshole, and you didn't want to talk to them anyway, and the universe has saved you. <laughs> yeah. Hi, name, question. Confidence. So it's not even like you have to summon this experience of confidence, and then you can go do stuff. No, just use practical uh, techniques uh, for behavior, and confidence arises when you do those. Focus on your task. What are you doing? Uh, what do you have to do? And either assign yourself a task, I will go and introduce myself by saying hi in my name and asking a question about them, uh, or like uh, if I'm in a show or if I'm public speaking, I have to deliver these words, or uh, I have to make sure I run down the full length of the football field completely nude, or, you know, focus on your work, whatever it is, and that will sort of take care of the, the nerves. Mm -hmm. And then the other one, uh, cultivate, garden your sense of self by taking very good care of yourself. May Pamper. I real quick? Yeah. Oh, and maybe sometimes... Dance a little bit, you know, get in front of the mirror and, and dance, put on your favorite music and find your angles. I mean, I do this with this headdress usually, but it helps me feel confident when I'm outside and, you know, I'm asked to move a certain way that I know I can. And it helps me feel comfortable, you know, when I wear this veil or I even do it without having, being dressed up as a sister. I do it on my own. I just find music and, you know, just just something to get your heart going and you know and even my icebreaker sometimes when I'm at a club and I'm not feeling that like uh, socially uh, ready um, and a little nervous and it's just too loud sometimes you can't hear just go out and dance people are gonna radiate to you because you're you're doing something that not everybody was doing um, but you're, you know, you could have been the person that started that dance floor and, and that feeling that you're that sole person there and all of a sudden everybody comes in, it just feels even more wonderful because you brought someone joy by just dancing and they got that confidence to get up there with you and, you know, you can groove out with them. I don't know. I like dancing, so I use dancing as a form of building my own confidence up, so... 
do what you do, yeah. do what you enjoy, and that will help to build, cultivate, build, and grow your confidence as well. Yeah. Also, um, you should come to the convent. Always giving money, uh, fashionable clothing, and expensive food items to drag nuns is a great way to build confidence. I highly recommend it. Glitter. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Glitter. Especially in um, places where the sun doesn't shine. Big confidence builder. Right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to show me yours? Revelatory. Divine.